Welcome to Stuck in My Mind podcast, the show where we dive into the mind of a regular guy on his road to self discovery. You'll hear everyday people just like you share the latest topics, personal stories, and things they've learned along the way. And now, please welcome your host, Wise. And welcome to another episode. I am your host, W-I-Z-E, and I have a very special guest on today. He's a business consultant. He's here to share a little uh, knowledge to help our small business owners out there. Welcome to the show, Carrie Prejean. What's going on? Uh, good afternoon, Wise. Thanks for having me on the show. Appreciate oh, it. The pleasure's all mine. So, Carrie, what is it exactly that you do? Um, I'm, pre- I'm pre- predominantly a CFO consultant, chief financial officer. Um, so what I help the owner with are, are dashboards, they get weekly dashboards where they can have like a 30,000 foot view of their business, how things are going without having to get lost in the minutia of all the day-to-day accounting. I try and limit it to one hour a week. You have all the dashboards for receivables, payables, sales, cash flow, uh, taxes, inventory, whatever needs to be put into a, a dashboard so the owner can navigate the business rather than he can go out and do bit, what he does best, which is get business, he or she, rather than spending half a day in accounting and finance with you know stuff they really, they're not good at anyway. They don't like it. And they need to have some people do that. In addition to that, I help them to uh, eliminate dysfunction in their organizations. And what I mean by that. <clears throat> Uh, you'll see businesses that, you know, they start out just the owner, then he hires a couple of people, a few more people, five, 10, 15 years down the road, you might have 30, 40, 50 people working there. And there are different areas where there are bottlenecks or dysfunction. Things just don't seem to happen well. And generally what that's a, a result of is having no or poor procedures for whatever that function is. And the reason you have poor procedures or maybe no procedures because you have People over here doing part of the job. You have people over here doing another part of the job and their expectations, their way of quote, getting it done are different. So when they don't mesh up, you get the dysfunctional conversation in the business, dysfunctional you know, pro- procedure in the business. So when you get all the employees together, rather than the boss coming in and say, here's a problem, here's how we're going to fix it, which is what happens a lot of times. Um, you know, the, the employees have no ownership of that. That's, that's, that's the boss's fix, which I have no investment in. I, I don't own any of that. Um, so when it doesn't work, they'll call another meeting six months from now and chew out a few people in the process. But if you get the employees to come together and they look at this thing in terms of the, all their parts of the of the system, they come up with a good detailed written procedure that gets disseminated among all of them. <clears throat> and then they can you can train somebody else and you bring somebody else in and look, this is how we do this here. Think of it this way. Have you have have you ever seen a McDonald's run by MBAs? No, they're run by kids. <laughs> you know why kids can run a McDonald's? Because this is the way we do our fries. It's the way we do our big meals. Uh, there's a system in place. Yeah. It's the way we do everything. They have procedures for everything. Everybody understands everything about that. You can run a McDonald's with much teenagers. Same thing with the, the, the deck of an aircraft carrier. You know, you think about it, it's pretty complex where you have these decks lowering and raising jets, pulling them in, jets taking off on this hyperheated steam, jets landing, and they have to catch the wires. It's a pretty complex, you know, you have basically like an airport on a boat. <laughs> um, and you have 18 to 20 year olds running the whole show. How do you do that? You know, I mean, most 18, 20 year olds right now, you know, sitting at home playing games, doing whatever. Uh, these kids, they're drilled, they're drilled, they're drilled, they're drilled, they're trained. And they know exactly what they're supposed to do. They know exactly what most other people are supposed to do. And everybody's real clear on the procedure and their function in it. So when you can put that into a business, a lot of this function goes away. And that's where a lot of business owners also find themselves dragged into managing minutia, as I call it. Uh, they can free themselves up again to go get business, which is their main function, um, rather than getting lost in all that procedural stuff. You want the business operating in the background. You know, you you, you want to like not... The only time you want to notice the business is when something is not working. That's the only time you typically notice accounting is when something's not working. You know, cash flow is bad, tax notice. So uh, 
it's all designed to get the, the owner out of managing the business. Because number one is if you're a good entrepreneur, you're generally going to be a poor manager because the skill sets are opposite each other, right? <clears throat> Entrepreneurs see opportunity. They're willing to take risks. They take action. They make things happen. A good manager wants, you know, same thing over and over, pretty mon monotonous, wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat, methodical, kind of boring. That drives entrepreneurs crazy. I've seen entrepreneurs change things up just because it seems boring to them. And they upset the apple cart rather than just letting a good, steady process continue. Um, and the, the third thing that I do with business owners is I help them to guide their business into the future through strategic planning. And the big question that all this, all this is based on is the basic question of what do you want out of this business? You know, what's going to satisfy you? Uh, a mentor of mine asked me a long time ago, he says, you know the secret to life? I said, yeah, what is it? He goes, getting exactly what you want, getting ultimately satisfied. And he says, you know what the secret to that is? I was like, no. He goes, knowing what you want. And knowing what you want takes time, takes effort, takes reflection. Um, it's, it's nothing you're like, oh, I know this is exactly what I want. At first, it's me kind of hazy, you know, but the more you think about it, the more you like write it down, the more you cogitate on it, and also experiment or experience different kinds of what's out there. You'll find out, oh, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want to do it that way. You'll narrow it down to where you, this is exactly what I want. If, if an owner, you know, especially if you're starting out, if you can get real clear about what's going to ultimately satisfy you and head towards that, you'll eliminate a lot of problems for yourself. A lot of problems. And it's going to take time and practice uh, to get to that point. But again, you, what, helps, what helps a good, what helps, I guess, anyone in performance is having a good coach, right? If you think about all the world's top athletes, why do they have coaches and multiple coaches? Because you can't see yourself in performance. You can't see yourself doing it. I mean, you can watch the game films afterwards, yeah. but you can't see what the coach sees in real time and give you distinctions to not just up your game a little bit, but up it a lot. So that's what a good coach does for business owners, having a good if, business if you, coach. If you, think, if you think of even the greatest actors, Denzel Washington has a coach. Yeah. 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 All the really top performers in the world, they all have coaches. You know, they have coaches or guides or, you know, whatever you want to call them, somebody to help them reflect on and see their performance in a way that they can't see it in the, in the doing of it, right? So, yeah, so that's what I do for businesses. Um, a lot of it happens in conversation, actually. Uh, a lot, a lot, there's some exercises that we do, but a lot of it happens in conversation. And the good conversations to make people think always – you have to have questions. You have to ask good questions. You know, you can't just can't just have thoughts. That's not thinking. Having the same old thoughts run by because you know we all have thoughts that run through our head constantly. In fact, on automatic loop, and they're there so much we don't even hardly notice them. The danger is that sometimes we take some of those loops and we take them as the truth rather than that's just some opinion you form, right? So you have to be you have to be careful of what you hold as the truth. Um, it may just be some opinion that you picked up along the way. And it, and really what we're looking for is what works versus what doesn't work or what serves you versus doesn't serve you, what empowers you versus disempowers you. So you begin to identify the, the, the conversations that you have up here. What conversations are you having that you've been having a long time that disempower you, that don't serve you, that stop you? And it's to reinterpret those as a business coach, um, that allows the owner, again, distinctions, allows the owner to then up their game, so, so to speak, to a much higher level. Sorry about that. That's right. But, um, hold on one second. Let me mute this. So, basically, when you, when you was ref, referencing McDonald's, I actually started, I, was, I, I worked at a McDonald's, and it's a system. It's a yeah. system. They have a system in place where like you said teenagers are running the store because right. it's a simple it's a it's a it's a simple as a not a simple but it's a system that you can train people and have everything run the same way yeah and, it's, and, it's, it's a recipe right yeah i mean it's, it's a detailed recipe anybody can come in with a little bit of training they can follow the recipe and if you think about it i mean i know a guy who had a number of mcdonald's down here in baton rouge probably i don't know he sold them eventually, but I would guess he had 25, 30 McDonald's and he never flipped a burger. 
You know, he owned it. I'm sure he would go or he had people that would visit his stores, make sure they were following the rules. But, you know, he could take off a month, two months if he wanted to. He had a great income. He wasn't tied to the business. He wasn't cleaning the, the grease pit at, you know, when the store closed. They have people that do that. Whereas if you own your own restaurant, you do most of the cooking and you want to make sure the quality control and everything else, it's going to be hard for you to take off because without you, the business, the restaurant doesn't run as well. Yeah. So again, and it's not about getting, you know, mediocre business, but it's getting a good system that everybody understands that, you know, is well disseminated, detailed enough for anybody to come in and do it with a little training and the business runs itself. So the, and I, one of the other things I'm always pushing business owners to do is you want to be systems driven, not people dependent. You know, you have some of these businesses, somebody, somebody comes in, been around for a long time, has some special knowledge, knows exactly how the whatever over here, this machine works or how this process works. And if they leave, if they get hit by a bus, if they go on vacation, that whole thing goes to hell, right? That doesn't work anymore because nobody else, it's like they have the black box of the information. Yeah. So you're now the business owner, the business is, um, is subjected to whatever that, that person who's on the black box that they want to do or dysfunction happens. So need to need to break a lot of that up come up with good procedures good systems where it's not some specialized knowledge and yet you're dependent on a person you want to be systems driven that makes sense yes it does it does and, and what do you and as far as small businesses what do you suggest as far as using social media as marketing tools to help grow their business as well if, especially if it's uh uh, I guess a, a business they can they can get orders from online or whatever. It's yeah. I, well, again, marketing is not my not my yeah. strong point. Okay, but what I have noticed in my own efforts is that uh, social media advertising. There's a lot of people out there doing it. Right. It's easy to get lost in the crowd. What's going to have your offer? And again, you have to have an offer that addresses some concerns out there. Your offer has to stand out. It has to be. Um, enticing, you know, it has to be, it, you know, without it, without getting crazy, it has to be sexy. It has to be something that has people stand up and notice. Yeah, it has yeah. to have some appeal. It has to have, you know, the sizzle of the bacon. You know, what, what wakes you up when with, with bacon is not the taste of the bacon so much, but you can smell it, smell you can it. Hear it sizzling. Yeah, and that's what gets you hungry for it, right? So that's what you need is to have an offer that's like the sizzling bacon in the morning that people will come and want. Um, and again, I'm not an expert in any of that stuff, how to get it out, what the platforms to put it on, uh, frequency or any of that stuff. But I know that much that an offer has to be appealing. It has to be, it has to be seductive. You want a seductive offer, right? Yeah. Um, and that's, what's going to have people come in and want to do business with you. But, and beyond that, you know, a, a really seductive offer will have people want to at least get in contact with you to maybe discuss doing business together. But what's going to what's at the center of all human interaction is trust. Now, trust and I'm not talking about trust someone for everything about your life. Right. That's the, the distinction is you have to learn how to who to trust and for what domain of action are you going to trust them in and have to identify what's at risk. Of course, right. you're not you're not going to have someone, you know, specializes <laughs> in, in, in this over here. And entrust them in a field that they have no knowledge in. Right. But what you can trust them to say is, hey, you know what? I really don't know anything about that. Uh, you know, if I had a really good, you know, I have really few good friends. And what I can trust them to do is like, hey, I can't do brain surgery on you. You know, I don't know how to do your tax return. Um, and whatever it is, I trust them enough to tell me when they're not competent to do something that they'll let me know that. And again, we know each other fairly well. So I have a pretty good idea what they're competent at. But uh, I, I can trust them to not put me in, in peril or in danger by coordinating something that they're not competent to do. But, I mean, there's four, there's four in my training, there are four parts of trust. as care, caring. In other words, do you have my concerns as your concerns? Do we share concerns here? Do you care about my concerns as much as you care about yours? And yes. again, that's, that's the first big one that a lot of, a lot of businesses that I work with what I get from talking with the employees at first when I do what's called an identity check is they don't trust the owner. I mean, they trust them enough to come to work, get paid, do transactional stuff, but they don't trust them in terms of they don't really care about me. 
They're not here. They're not trying to further my career. They never ask how I'm doing. They never ask if I need anything to do my job. They don't care about my family. Hell, they don't even say good morning. You know, you know, say hello or goodbye or nothing. Uh, I'm just, I'm just a cog in the machine here. Um, beyond that, you have to show that you're sincere. In other words, what's coming out of your mouth has to match what they think is going on in your head. You have to be competent in that you can do what you say you can do. In other words, you 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 can perform, and then you're reliable. You know, that you have a history of, of keeping your promises. That's why McDonald's has billions and billions served. They're not, the, they're not saying the best burger in the world. They're saying they, they produced a lot of burgers, right? Um, so with those four components, if you can have those, but you really got to start with the with the, the caring part. Um, you know, are you familiar with George Carlin? Yes. Yeah, remember he has that thing about, um, <clears throat> he said, it's a big club and you ain't in it. You and I are not in the club. And his big point of it is they don't care about you. They don't yeah. care about you. So when you get, I mean, that's why you have, you know, certain, a certain percentage of the population has a big distrust, a big business, big government, you know, the whole, anything that's. Because they to them, to them, we're just numbers and yeah. statistics. We're, we're and just, yeah. So for I mean, us, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, for me, it's like like it just like you were saying. It's just they don't care about us. Even even for where I, like I still have my nine to five, and I'm growing my business so I can eventually retire my nine to five. And so so sometimes there's there's times you feel like they don't appreciate you. You come you you, you find out you might be underpaid compared to other places that that are in the same field that you're in. You're right. way underpaid in in the in the field in the in the position you in compared to other places, and and you you start thinking like, hey man, we we generate. I think we'd perform well where you've actually made profit this year, and a, a, probably the most profit you made ever. Mm -hmm. And then you kick back and you and you give us a fifty dollar gift card. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean that's insulting. You know, the company makes record profits and hand out $50 gift cards. Yes. And you also find out that in the market of wages, you're below the market. Yes. And that's that's the thing that a lot of business owners don't understand. It's like my business. I started it. I own it. I'm taking all the risk. Yeah. And that's true. And you deserve the lion's share of the profits. And without your employees, you don't have a business. Your employees are making you money. You know, whether in production, shipping, accounting, reception, sales, whatever. They make you money. They make, they hold this place together. They give you the structure that you can go out and create a nice lifestyle. But if, you, if your big commitment, if what they get is you're only committed to your business doing well, you making more profits, you having the lifestyles of Mission Shameless, you know, you having all the toys, all that stuff, they're not going to care about you because you don't care about them because it's all about you. It, it's a two-way street. No, it is. It is. It's And for me, I, like, like I said, I just started my business a couple of years ago, and it's a, it's a production company, and it's not it's not only three of us, and it's family. We're all family. It's and where we know it's it's gonna take time before we even see any type of profit, whatever. We we're in this because we see a vision. We we we're we're implementing things that eventually is gonna benefit us all. And there's things I lack in that. They're better at, so I let them handle it. And there's things I'm wow. better at, and so those are the things I take care of. And then two of us might not know anything. Another, and so we we split. We if I, I'm not, I'm 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 someone who yes I'm an owner, but if I don't know something, I'm willing to admit I don't know something, and and go to someone that does know the information I don't have because why would I want to jeopardize myself? And put myself in a position on, in, in, on something I don't know about. Yeah. I, eventually, I hope to learn about it, but I want to seek someone's help. There's no, there's no problem. Like you said, get a mentor, get a coach, get someone you can speak to. And people don't understand that. They don't understand that you need a mentor. You need someone you can speak to, someone that who's already experienced this, and and knows what this is, what this is, and can help you navigate the pitfalls. Or even avoid them because they've already experienced it. Right. Yeah. They've. You know, a good coach has seen, um, has seen the bad side of not performing well. You know, they've seen the ineffectiveness of, not, of performing mediocre mediocrity. 
Um, <clears throat> but yeah, they also have good distinctions that will allow you to make much more powerful moves because without a distinction, you everything looks the same, right? I mean, imagine you're in a room that's totally dark. Uh, are you going to confidently stride across that room? Hopefully, hopefully not conspire because <laughs> you don't know if they, you, don't, you don't know what you don't know how big the room is. You don't know if there's another door on the other side. You don't know whether there's any furniture. There's the walls there, yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows? There might be snakes in there for all you know. So without without the light, you have no distinctions of where anything is. Where's the opportunity? Where's the right path? Where's the pitfalls? Now you turn on the light, and all of a sudden you have all the distinctions of where everything is, where it's safe to walk through. You can travel. Is there another door? How big is the room? All that kind of stuff. But without distinctions, especially in terms of performance, like this, a whole distinction of trust. Most business owners are shocked when you tell them, you know, the the two biggest things I got out of conversation with the employees, they don't trust you and they think you're a poor manager. They're like, what? What do you mean they don't, do you mean they don't, they don't trust me? I pay them, don't I? Well, yeah, you pay them, but that's just, that's a transactional level. That's very superficial. What they don't get is that you care about them as people. They're just cogs in your machine from their perspective. And you're going to have to change. If you want really loyal, really committed people uh, who are high achievers, you're going to have to attract that. And the way you attract that is you're going to have to demonstrate that you're you're uh, trustworthy, that you care about people, that you're sincere, and, and, that you're competent, that you're reliable in terms of owning and running a business. And and by running a business, it don't mean getting in and managing minutiae all over the place. Mainly, it's staying the hell out of the way. And you, and you're smart in that if you're not competent, in something you're not going to try and do it. You know, you don't want to unlearn what you do that brings in business yeah. to learn what you probably don't like anyway and aren't that good at. That's the whole thing of entrepreneur and manager. You know, why would you want a, a really successful entrepreneur who can bring in a lot of business, unlearn those skills so they can learn how to be a good manager? It's it's insane. Um, anyway. <clears throat> it's, no, this is great, man. This is great. This is some great information. People definitely need to hear it because it, it's true. People need to, especially small business owners, the way you do do it is by making your employees feel like this is theirs as well and, and showing them that, Hey, this is, if I do well, you're going to do well, you're going to be successful in here. You're going to advance. You're going to be able to, to do better, bigger things. And, and, and so to be able to have teach owners to do that. And again, it's all about systems and you're showing people systems, how to improve their businesses that, that way they can be hand off, hands off and let the people that they have manage, do what they, that's what they hired them for. Right. And sometimes a lot of people like to micromanage yep. and, and, and that's not good for business because you can get to the point where you're really irritating your employees. Like, you know, you don't trust me. You don't, you don't allow me to exactly. do my job. Exactly. The, the owners that come in, they're always looking over the employee's shoulder. They're always getting in there. They're always fooling with everything. The message that's sending their employees is, I don't trust you to do it right. I don't trust you to get the job done. You are not going to do it the way I do it. And, you know, that, that's another thing that you really got to kill off as, as a business. You know, the De Niro from the movie Casino, that's the right way, the wrong way, and the way I do things. Yeah. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be the owner's way. And now, now some things, okay, but just general and procedures. And as long as you say, okay, these are the objectives. This, this is my, these are my conditions of satisfaction. These are the results I want to see produced. And then get out of the way and let them do it. You know, it's kind of like the old build a fence thing. You ask 10 different people how to build a, to build a fence. You probably get 10 different fences. Yeah. Does it matter? Um, yeah, but getting the business owner out of the day-to-day -day management and have them focus on, and I, and I like what you said earlier about your own business, that you have a vision because it takes having a vision about, you know, where you're headed, what is it you want to accomplish. And again, if you can incorporate that into what's going to make me satisfied, truly satisfied, you can build the details of that. You can flesh that out real well. Um, that's what's going to attract people to come follow you because people don't people don't follow people. They follow visions. They follow big ideas. Um so you have to have, again, an idea that's captive mission, that's captivating and, again, seductive to have people want to come work with you because it's bigger than them, too. You don't want the mercenary that's just going to show up for a paycheck. I mean, that's OK sometimes if you have that kind of employee. Um, but if you want somebody who's really loyal, committed, 
and it's going to step his game up. It's not going to be a mercenary. Um, another George Carlin line I've, I've seen from his uh, shows is most people work just hard enough to not get fired and make just enough money not to quit. And that's yeah. you know kind of a sad situation, but I think that's probably the math of the working force that's out there right now. And and um, it's and George Carlin was ahead of his time. He he predicted a lot of things that that are going on now, and yeah, and and it's it's a it's crazy because he's a comedian, but he spoke the truth. Whatever when when he, when he spoke, he spoke the truth. And to real and to even to hear hear you quote him now. Cause I, I love George Carlin. I, I've watched almost all his specials since I was, since I was a young man. And it's, a, it's just crazy that someone who you would just think as a comedian has, has, has a key that can help you understand life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he, um, all the really good comedians are able to take the facts of life and present them from a perspective that's hilarious. I mean, you look at all the great comedians, you know, um, I mean, Richard Pryor, Chris Rock come to mind. They don't talk about like far out crazy stuff. They talk about like real stuff, yeah. but it's funny. I mean, one of the funniest things I ever heard Richard <laughs> Richard Pryor say was, he's talking about his dad, how his dad was real tough. He said, yeah, he says, I'd do something stupid. My dad would say, hey, go play out in the street. Where's my car keys? <laughs> Where's my car keys? <laughs> Which you know he's, he's trying to let him know that he's going to run him over, yeah. Run, yeah, run him down. But you know, simple. I mean, that's not. You would see that and it would be like, that's not funny. But the way he tells it is hilarious. But it was yeah. it was part of his history, part of the fact of his life. Yeah, um, yeah all the great comedians. They're all uh, Lenny Bruce, another one. He was yeah. real good about taking facts or some things about life that everybody could see, but Showing them from showing them from a perspective that was humorous. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Colin Colin was a very good observer of social of the, the social issues. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> loved his uh, commentary about golf too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so do you, so you do, so do you feel that you incorporate some of his 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 thought process into what you do? Well, I find I find that. Um, a lot of what I do, I, I see it reflected back in some of his performances. And I'm not saying, <clears throat> and of course, Colin influenced me in terms of just yes. an entertainer and, and the rest of that stuff. But did I take his stuff and, and try and build a uh, consultancy out of it? No. Uh, a lot of what, uh, well, again, it's accounting background, CPA background, that kind of stuff is part of it. But the other part of it is the ontology of language training. And eventually I became a certified ontological coach. And that's where a lot of the whole thing about moods and distinctions and trust. I'll, that's where all that comes from. Um, but it helps. I, I, mean, I find it a very powerful discipline. It helps in business. It helps in life. Um, you can have you can have much better, more productive conversations with people when you have the distinctions of, you know, whatever it is you're talking about, rather than it's all emotional and opinion. And, you know, I heard on the news and the, anyone self out in the crowd you know, whatever the popular mood is, oh, well, that's fact. It's not. It's just everybody's opinions. Yeah. You know, yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, so this whole thing about the ontology of language is that we all, language, a lot of people just say language describes reality. And I'm going to, the, the claim of the, 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 I guess, the the developer, whatever you want to call it, it was uh, instituted by a guy named Fernando Flores from Chile. And he made some claims about language. He said, number one, we're linguistic beings in addition to being biological beings. And our language lives in the biology. And how do you know that? Because you get embarrassed and you feel flushed. You know, if somebody says something, you you get angry, you feel it in your body. Different linguistic responses generate different physiological responses in your body. So what happens with language is that it doesn't just describe life. It actually generates your reality. So whatever all this is, all the right, wrong, good, bad, like it, don't like it, makes sense, don't make sense, all the stuff, all the things that you're prejudiced for and against, all your different tastes, you know, food, uh, entertainment, where you live, your car, people you like hanging out with, what you think is fashionable, all that stuff. All that stuff, you, you it's, it's pre-choosing for you all day long. And it's eliminating the, you know, the stuff that you say you don't like ahead of time. It's eliminating that. Oh, look at how stupid that looks. Oh, I'd never wear that. 
Um, so that generates your reality. It generates your, your perspective is your reality. So what you have to really be careful of is who's got in your perspective. Most people are totally unaware of it. And we're all, you know, we're bombarded by, by social media. We're bombarded by TV, movies, you know, uh, TV, not so much anymore. When I was a kid, TV was everything. And, you know, before that, it was like the radio. Before that, it was newspapers. But yeah. we're bombarded constantly with, hey, this should be your opinion. This should be your opinion. This is it, yeah. not even presented. This is your opinion. This is a fact. And it's really just <laughs> and, and that's why I love podcasting because people still consider like this it's growing so fast and people are actually too, it, it's are people actually listening and i feel especially independent podcasters because we're the people who are we're the people we are in the streets we are the community we, right. we, we are the ones we're not the joe rogan's out there making these hundred million dollar deals we're independent podcasters that I'm not saying he doesn't work hard. He, he's deserved all the money he got. But for us, we're here. We're really, we're the news. Right. No, I, I agree with you. And that's exemplified by CNN's recent CNN Plus. It was dead in less than 30 days. And they spent $300 million on it. It's like, wow. And, I mean, if you look at their ratings, they're down like, what, close to 80, 90% from a year ago? You know, and so you got to ask the question, what, what has CNN done? Are they... Are they, are they just not telling the news anymore? And if you look at them, really, they're more just a one long continuous opinion machine. Same thing with Fox News. Same thing with most of them. They're just opinions yeah. and social commentary. And again, they, they, they developed this other thing where they put like a panel of five people. Sometimes panel of seven. It's like the more people you have, the more important it is. And just, <laughs> just diluted. You know, Walter Cronkite. It's just him. And that's, and that's, and that's yeah, that's who used to get when that's 60 minutes. I used to, Growing up, I, when I, like I said, when I grew up, like you said, there wasn't all these channels. I grew up probably with four or five channels in my life. I had <laughs> ABC, I had ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox. We didn't have, and whatever local stations, whatever, and we didn't have all these channels that they have now. We didn't, we right. just, so it was different. And you, like you said, you got the news from Walter Cronkite. Right. Yeah, that's the way it is. I mean, that's the yeah. closing line. So yeah, the 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 trust in the news media, the mainstream media, is way. I think it's less than ten percent, just because it's it's pretty much just become a big opinion machine and trying to drive the social narrative. Um, and people are tired of that. You know, people are sick of that. And they found <clears throat> that a lot of things that the media has reported on as fact is really um, not true. And some of the things they say were were not fact turned out to really be fact. Yeah. Um, look at the Hunter Biden laptop. I mean, they even had guys from the from the intelligence community come together and put a, put a letter in saying, oh, it's it's Russian, uh, Russian not interference, uh, Russian disinformation. And that turns out even the New York Times is confirmed that Hunter laptops, lap, it's real. In fact, there's probably three or four of them. And uh, some of the stuff I've seen coming off there just blows my mind. Um, but anyway, but I mean, that was, that was one big one. That, oh no 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 Russian Russian disinformation Russian disinformation <laughs> and now it turns out eh, no it's pretty real and it's pretty bad um anyway I kind of got we kind of got off the <laughs> sorry no, it, no it's fine that's my show is not a scripted show we, right. we speak about we speak on real life and things that we, how we feel about and that's it is what it, I'm not that's why I love doing my podcast because it's just having conversation. When you and and so when you can master the art of conversation, you can do very well in this. And so being able to speak to people from all types of uh, businesses, walks of life, whatever, it, it for me th that's what I enjoy. I enjoy it so much because I get to learn as well as my audience. I'm here learning with my with my audience, so that's why I do it. At first, I thought it was selfish and a. a a guest pointed out, like, no, it's not. It's you wanting to grow as an individual and as a person. That's that's like self love. That's selfless, actually, because then you're also sharing it with your audience. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's like you're sharing all this. It's not like you're trying to hoard it. Yes. Secret the secret uh, decoder ring and hide all the information. <laughs> you know, you're sharing. It. You're putting this out in public. Anybody yes. can share in it. That's great. Yeah. 
Well, Carrie, it's been great, man. I appreciate this. This has been really good information. I had a great time talking to you. Now is the time where you get to let people know everything. Where can they find you, website, everything? Okay. Um, I can work with pretty much anybody in the English-speaking world now, thanks to technology we have like this, you know, Zoom meeting, what have you. Um, anyway, anybody's interested in working with me or like just get in contact with me, you can go to my website, strategicbusinessadvisors.org. There's a, a calendar link or just book a, book a con conversation. Um, you can also find me on LinkedIn, uh, Carrie Prejean, CFO Consulting, uh, LLC. I'm on there. Um, if you want to email me, it's Carrie, C-A-R-Y, at CFOconsulting.co, not com, just C-O. All right. Now, don't leave just yet. We're going to chat a little bit offline. But now it is time for shout outs. Big shout out to the Real Wise fam, Poppy J, Brandy J. Love you guys. Big shout out to the boss lady, Fina. Love you, baby. Appreciate you. Big shout out to our guest, Carrie Prejean, for coming through and, and sharing his, his knowledge and, and his information. And as always, a big, big shout out to all the essential workers out there. God bless y'all. Be safe. You know your boy Wise does it. Peace out. Thanks for listening. Listen on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, and TuneIn. Find us on social media on Twitter at Wise underscore B underscore Blunt. Instagram at Wise underscore B underscore Blunt. And a Facebook fan page, www.facebook slash Wise 76. Check back soon for new episodes. Until next time, peace out.